Hey, Joel, thanks for the time, man. Are you guys at all worried, Joel, that this is going to only get worse? Um, I think there's some, you know, worry until we get, you know, a few days of test results. Um, when you're only testing once a week, you know what I mean? Things can come up and it can kind of spread, especially if you're not showing symptoms. Um, so there's definitely some worry, but, you know, we try to just take a day at a time focus and, uh, and really just try to focus on the game plan and what we could get done today. And, you know, we'll kind of see what happens tomorrow. Gotcha. And, and this is not the first time for you guys having to have, having had to deal with it all of last year. Um, how much comfort does that give you, Joel? Does it give you some that you guys have been through this before and, and have been able to kind of, you know, sustain things? Yeah, you know, it, it's obviously an unfortunate situation. You want to see your guys on the field, but we have been through it. You know, we had multiple weeks last week, last year where we couldn't fully practice. We couldn't, you know, we, we lost some players, um, you know, including the playoff game. And so, you know, we do have experience with it. And I think, uh, you know, the coaching staff and the players are ready to step up and, and really – you know, try to attack this week and we control what we control. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Nate Ulrich is next. Hey, Joel, what, what did that offensive line look like out there and walk through um, just how do you feel about some of the guys who are probably going to have to step in? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate, you know. We already, you know, lost Jack this year at Hub and, and you know, Forbes – earlier in the year um and then to you know lose two more starters you know white and jet is is tough you know but i do have faith in the guys that are are going to have to step up you know coach callahan coach peters john de have, have done a, a good job of preparing these guys and you know i think most of the guys that are going to have to start up and have playing experience you know and and uh that that's really important um but they're focused they're ready and that's why they're on the team you know you, you keep 53 guys so you're going to have to plan for the injuries. Now we have to deal with this COVID situation, but um, those guys are going to be ready and those guys are going to, you know, have the opportunity to play and we're going to, you know, pick each other up and, and um, you know, bring the, I don't know how many guys we'll have out there, but we'll bring the guys that are, that are able to play out and, and get ready to roll. Joe, what was the mood among the players today? Like you guys got to keep winning to, to reach that goal of making the playoffs. And obviously you get hit with some bad news today. So. I mean, was there, was it like, you know, Debbie Downer vibe or were guys positive? What was it like? Um, you know, it, it was like this morning we were coming in to get like a normal, you know, Wednesday day in. And so guys were in there to rehab and lift and they're kind of picking guys off one at a time. So it was a little, a little unfortunate. We kind of realized it was going to be more than one or two guys. Um, everybody got sent home. So it was, uh, it was more of a like, man, like what, what's going to happen? There was definitely some, uh, there was definitely some, you know, obviously we're not excited that guys are testing positive for COVID. So there was definitely some uh, uneasiness. Um, but but once we kind of settle and, and we see where we're at, you know, Coach does a good job of telling us to really focus on what we can control. And, and we have to try and prepare for this week. You know, that's, that's all we can do. And that's all we could do last year. And, um, you know, it's, it's really an unfortunate situation. Like you never expect an NFL, this, you know, to have the virus and, and these things. So it's something new for everybody. Um, over the last couple of years, but uh, we really just try to take one at a day at a time and, and focus on what we can control. Thank you, Nate. Mary Kay Cabot, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Joel, just wondering, you know, and just looking at the uh, Raiders a little bit and what Max Crosby has been bringing to the table in terms of pressures and Yannick, um, can you just uh, address that a little bit and you guys kind of being obviously shorthanded with a couple of guys like that to contend with? Yeah, it's, it's been really impressive. You know, I, I think I've played him, you know, at least once, maybe twice in my career, um, Crosby and, and Yannick a few times. And both those guys have always been good players. You know, Crosby's always been a guy that plays to the whistle, plays very hard. Um, but this year he's really taken a step up and he's become one of the more premier, you know, pass rushers in this league. Um, you know, it's not all sacks, but his pressures, his disruptiveness – um, has been really good. Um, and at least their interior guys, you know, I think their front four is kind of their strength of their defense, the way they get after the quarterback and, and make things happen. And it's, it's a challenge for us, you know. There's good rushes every week, but it's a challenge for us, you know, with our O-line a little bit, you know, um, down numbers. We, we're going to have to, you know, have a plan for these guys. But I think based in, 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 our, uh, in our tackles, and if our guards get on them, that they're going to do a good job as well. Thanks. Thanks, Mary Kay. Marla Reidenauer is next. 
Yeah, Joel, I don't know. Did anybody like it walk through like any players say anything to the team or I just wondering, you know, if, and if not, just how is coach Stefanski when he talked to you guys? Yeah, we, um, you know, we're kind of in and out. We, there wasn't really much time for guys to talk. We got in, we did our, you know, our normal special teams walkthrough and then our offense defensive walkthroughs got all our plays in that we'd normally get on a Wednesday and um, kind of went over that. So there was no, you know, raw, raw speech from the players. Coach just said, you know, like, like I've probably said 12 times in this uh, control we can control, you know, and, and, and really just focus on getting better and improving. No one outside this building is going to feel sorry for us. Um, you know, and, and we gotta, we gotta play the game and, and we're going to have guys out there ready to play. And that's our mission. If you got to spend some extra time, if you gotta, you know, focus on some things, that's what you got to do this week. But, um, you know, we've been here before and I, I know we have the right man leading, the, leading us through this. At least for the offensive line, does coach Callahan become even more crucial at this, you know, in this kind of a crisis, I guess you'd say. Yeah. I, I, I think it's throughout the year, though. It's you're preparing these guys to play when something comes up. You know, it's hard to – if the guy hasn't been working and hasn't been preparing all season, it's hard just the week of to be like, all right, you're ready to go. But when you see, you know, reps that guys like Blake and Michael Dunn and, you know, Froholt, these guys have done in practice, Alex Taylor, um, the work they put in in practice, after practice, in the weight room and, and in the meetings – you know, they're prepared for this moment, you know, and it's going to this week, hopefully get some practice in so they can, you know, feel comfortable with the guys next to them. But I think it's a cumulative thing throughout the week. And then obviously there's some scheme that comes into it and, and some, uh, you know, solutions that you're going to want to have in, in the run game and the pass game. But um, I think it's a, a yearly thing. And I think there is a lot of, you know, credit to Coach Callahan and the work these guys have put in to get ready for this moment. Thanks, Marla. Jeff Shadell, we'll go to you. Hey, Bo, um, this is about what you went through last year. When, of course, you had to miss that Steelers game. When did you feel good? And I'm asking that because you have at least uh, three more games after Saturday. Yeah, I was pretty I, – I didn't have very bad symptoms last year when I, when I tested. I was a little tired. Um, you know, I lost taste and smell, maybe a little congestion. But I, I wasn't too bad. Um, you know, I wasn't really – I felt fine when I played the Chiefs the next week, and then obviously the season was over, but I wasn't, you know, out of shape or out of breath. For me personally, you know, I know different guys in different positions had um, different outcomes, but for me, I didn't feel too bad. Thank you, Jeff. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Joel. First, I wanted to ask you, how did you think James Hudson did uh, Sunday against the Ravens? Yeah, I think um, overall it was very, very, um, you know, positive. You know, I think he played really hard. He, um, you know, had a, had a good energy about himself that he was, uh, he, you know, there were some times when he was celebrating and doing some really good things. Um, you know, I think in the past game, there were some really good signs, like, like you know, he was getting to his spot. There was a couple little mental things here and there. And in the run game, it's all about finishing your block and, and finishing those things. And it was not for a lack of effort, you know what I mean? It was just body position and a couple little things like that. But, like, overall, a very positive start, and, and hopefully it's something he can build on and continue to – continue to work and, and just get better every week. And, you know, with the positive tests going up through the league, you know, and even around the country, has there been talk about guys changing their behavior outside of the building as far as, you know, trying to limit their exposure so you don't have as many tests, positive tests? You know, um, I don't think we've had a talk as a team or anything like that. And I, I'm sure the, you know, PA and the NFL is probably trying to, get something going to, to try and limit the uh, exposure to people. I think, you know, a person-by-person -person basis, you know, you see these numbers going off, you probably want to try and take a few more precautions if you don't want to test positive, yeah. you, you know, but sometimes you can't control it. And for us, you know, the way we're testing right now, our testing cadence of once a week, like if a guy gets in the building, you know, it, it, there's a chance the building might be the unsafest place for you at this time just with the way they're testing and if a guy gets in the building. But, um, there haven't been, you know, talks to the team yet about, you know, any of those. But we're in intensive protocols now, and Coach Fancy did, you know, mention to us today about let, let's be safe out there. Let's make sure we're doing all the right things and, and trying to make those right decisions when we're, we're out and about. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Next up is Ashley Bassett. Hey, Joel, I guess just like as a leader on the team for yourself, like what can you do to kind of make sure that guys – 
you know, number one, are ready to step up if they're going to be needed to do that. Uh, and number two, just to make sure that there's not too much focus being being wasted on things that you can't control in terms of like worrying about if there's going to be more positive tests, things like that. Yeah, we, we you know, um, did our virtual meetings today and it was pretty much a normal Wednesday, you know, or Tuesday because we're on you know, a short week. But, um, but yeah, we, we turned the meetings into a focus of that. We reach out to each other. Um, obviously, the positive tests are going to be a big thing. Every morning we're going to see who tests positive. It's, it's something we got to figure out. But, um, you know, we got to get ready to play. And to a man, like, like whatever that takes to get you ready to play, like, there, there's, the, you know, there's once you get out there on Saturday and the whole world's watching you, like, no one's going to care what you did on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But what you did on those days is going to prepare you for the game. And so, you discuss that with guys. You make sure we're focused in practice, focused in meetings. And, um, you know, I think to a man, guys are going to be prepared for this game. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. To Dan Lobby. Hey, Joel, you've mentioned a few times that, you know, how, how Kevin has kind of handled himself and, and he's the right guy to kind of lead you guys through this. I'm just wondering, unfortunately, you've had a lot of experiences seeing him in these moments. So what, what is it about him that, that makes him so able to kind of guide you guys through situations like this? Um, it's just, it's just who he is. I mean, he's the same guy, win, lose, um, indifferent, you know, he set a standard, what the standard is, and that's what we live up to. It's, you know, there's a standard of play for the Cleveland Browns. If you're the starter, if you're the backup, if you're off the practice squad, if you're some guy we picked up this week because we need an extra body, like the Cleveland Browns set a standard, um, and how we want to play the game. And that's what he holds himself to and his coaching staff. And there's times where he likes in the guys. There's times when he is emotional. But when it comes to our day-to-day -day routine and our schedule and preparing for games, like, it's the same. It's the same. We're about that work and we're about that focus. And, uh, you know, he doesn't make excuses for it. He stands up in front of the team and, and tells you how it is and what it is and, and what we're doing. He doesn't He doesn't lie to us in that front. And, and that's really what we're, we're, um, we're about this week and what we're focused on. And so for him to, you know, kind of stand in front of the team and just tell him, like, no one cares. Like, we have to go out there and play a football game and try and win a football game. Um, that's just kind of – you hear that, and that's that's the heartbeat of the team. That's the coach. You take that as leaders and, and, you know, pass it along to your position room, and you get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I'll take two more quick ones. Tony Grossi, Mary Kay Cabot. Tony. Hey, Joel. This uh, day had a deja vu feel, feel to it, so I got two questions about last year. On the one hand, um, did the uh, – Adversity of the, you know, the yearly COVID scares uh, galvanize the team in a weird sort of way? Yeah, we were, you know, um, it was one of those things we were doing things last year. You know, we were trying to play a sport when a lot of the world was shut down, traveling and other other things. Um, and so there was some, you know, kind of camaraderie in, in bringing us together and not really knowing who we were going to have every week and if someone was going to be positive or, or, you know, and we were testing every day last year. So there was always a chance for someone, something to pop up, you know, every day of the week. Um, and, it, and it really brought us together uh, in, in certain situations, but um, it's one of those things we're in it together, you know, and, and I think football is a galvanizing sport as it is. And, you know, a lot of people use things as motivation, you know, each guy's kind of different. But it's one of those things, you know, and, and we're, we're going to be focused on our task at hand, but, uh, you know, hopefully this can bring us tighter together. And uh, on the other hand, though, did, did the uh, mental toll of, of, of that uh, um, anxiety day by day of who's going to be there and who's not going to be there, did that take a toll, too, by the end of the year? Yeah, I mean, every morning testing and, and going in and doing virtual meetings, like, it definitely threw off your routine, you know, it became kind of a new routine, but it definitely threw off your, your day-to-day -day routine. And, you know, you're kind of waiting for that text or that call or that, you know, Twitter, you know, Adam Schefter tweeting out that someone that's a positive in the Browns building. Um, so there was, there is a mental challenge to it. Um, you know, it's a national football league though. It's, it's not supposed to be easy, you, you know, and there's, there's things that happen and you have to be mentally tough to, to, you know, play and thrive in this league. And I think, I think we have the right guys for the job, but um, it's just something that you add to your, your, your kind of daily routine and you, you really go from there. Thank you, Tony. Final question, Mary Kay. Uh, yeah, Joel, can you speak a little bit to the, you know, just the magnitude of this game and you guys, you guys went into the, 
you know, the Ravens game, almost looking at it as a sort of a win or go home proposition. But, uh, you know, does this still have that same feel to it, especially it being an AFC game? And, and what sort of is the mindset there? Yeah, most definitely. You know, we, we talked about it and, you know, kind of since the bye, we've had this 1-0 and mentality. And, and really all year, we're focused on trying to win our next game, you know. But this is a very important game. You know, they're, we're one game back in our, our division, um, you know, tied with the Bengals. Pittsburgh's right there. Um, but the Raiders are, you know, one game back of us, I think, um, you know, record-wise. And so so it, we're right there, you know, and, and every game down the stretch is going to matter, especially for tiebreakers and, and playoff positioning. You know, we're trying not to look at the big picture, but you know these games matter. And Coach is talking about going 1-0 in December last week, and now we want to go 2-0. and And um, it is a huge game for us. Um, you know, it's, it's really important. It's the next game for us. But, you know, the, the Raiders are a team, that, you know, a team that's fighting for the playoffs just like us. So it's, uh, it's going to be a big one. You know, I, I think no matter who's out there, we're going to be focused. We're going to be ready to roll and, you know, try and go 1-0 this week. 